OK, so the entire real number line will be your. It will be your range set for the random variable X. OK. So now you tell me uh, if we take the entire real number line as our range set, is there a problem to that? Like well, all this while we were using. Like sum of P of X is equal to X is equal to zero is equal to some. PX and so on. And we had summed over all X in the. Range set and said that it is equal to one. So but if this entire set now becomes. Minus infinity to infinity, so what problems will we face? So now if you if for example, say we are mapping our events to say time. For example, for example, what is the random time that you will be? For example, time for failure. So your say t is a random variable. So what will happen? So t your t, what will happen to t? T will be a continuous variable. Do you agree? The t will be greater than or equal to zero. Any values? All these things you'll be facing, right? So for a continuous random variable, say if you have a time variable t, and this is the most important part for your for machine learning because most of the time you'll be using continuous random variables, or normal distributions, and so on. So your range set will be R. So now what is the probability that probability that your random variable takes one particular value? Even if by a naive definition, most of the times, what will be the probability? Can you tell me? So one value, say X. So if your if your random variable maps from the sample space to the real full real number line, it is your range. So what will be the probability that your random variable is taking a value of X. For discrete values, each of them had a single single probability, right? So, but for if it is a continuous value, what is the probability that you'll be taking a value of Zero. I? Of course, for all real proper distributions except the Dirac distribution, you will have for most cases. For most even if you for all cases actually, because if you derive this distribution, it's a discrete distribution again. So for continuous variables. So uh, for I'll give you an intuition. So for example, if your random variable takes values between zero and infinity, so what is the probability that you will be exactly getting a failure at 2.111235 seconds? It's not possible, right? It's a single number and your range set is a infinite set. So you kind of you, you will most likely not get a. You will not get any probability at a particular number. So what is the what should we do? We should consider intervals in instead. So this interval, what is the probability we will be able to say? Is that clear? Is the intuition and the motivation clear? Why? So if we are doing for a so for a single value, you will not get any probability because it's just a number. It's a it's zero. You cannot probability of having a single number is going to be zero. So you will be get calculating probabilities for a, for one interval. So for example, from x to x plus some delta. So how will you do that? That's what we'll be studying today. Okay. We cannot. So the crux is for a single probability. We cannot for a single number. We cannot do that, but we can do it for a range. So for we had studied PMF, right? So probability of X is equal to X. We had said say equal to PI for discrete and that was PMF. Do you remember that? The probability mass function. What is the mass of the probability at X? You remember, right? 
so yes continuous analog is known as a pdf or a probability distribution function so please uh, even if you are if you don't understand please stop me otherwise the entire rest of the next two ses sessions will be very difficult to follow so pdf is a probability distribution function so what happens is so if you with this property that if you are trying to find a probability between any two a and b you just integrate this pdf right so even for a continuous variable this would have happened right so if your probability is x between a comma b what would you have written can you tell me if x is continuous so what would have be the probability of sorry so discrete what would be the probability that x is between a and b zero no uh, between a and b so for example uh, a discrete not continuous oh sir we had all the values between a and b correct so you will add all the integers or all the values so x between a and b you will just add all the discrete values right this will be your probability do you agree no. so for example if you have a and b a and b and you have such two different three different values here so you will just add p1 plus p2 plus p3 yeah that's it so what will be your continuous analog here it will just be the integral of px or we will write pmf as fx of x right same thing continuous analog so you can think of f as the pmf in continuous space just think about it not it is not actually that but the continuous analog of that right is that clear is the relation between the two clear ah. okay so now you see what is the probability of x is equal to b so the reason i have already given you here so for a single value it's going to be zero because what is the integral between b to b of any function that is say a, a b, b minus fundamental theorem of calculus from the same range if you try to integrate so so if if f is equal to integral of x okay yes or no yeah yes others is it okay yes yes sir i would please interact again i'm telling so now if you have delta such that delta tends to zero can you tell me how did i get this let's do this we'll do this after some time so but can you tell me with why is this true first tell me this why is this property true that integral of minus infinity to infinity dx will be equal to 1 yeah, the the entire uh, uh, omega lies between minus infinity to infinity very good so this is nothing but equal to x you cannot have so this is nothing but equal to probability of minus infinity x infinity what is this probability this is just one the entire omega so this is nothing but omega right correct i hope you understand so a random variable taking values random variable can only take values on the real number line it cannot take infinities right or anything outside the real number line so it's the entire if all the samples or the outcomes will be within x and infinity and infinity so it's law of total probability yes or no okay second secondly this is known as the continuous this this is what you will be ma mainly dealing with in continuous distributions so if your probability f of x less than x 
what would be f of x less than x minus infinity to x? The integral of f of x. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So probability of x less than x in the in the discrete sense, what did we have? X all less than. So y say y all less than x belonging to the set. And you said that probability of x is equal to y, right? So what would be a continuous analog? It will just be all values between minus infinity and x. So continuous distributions may appear much simpler than your discrete distributions because it's just going to be integrals of some weight, something, and nothing else. So this is is this clear? So it's just the integral between minus infinity to x, and most of the times it will be continuous. So this is going if if it is continuous and derivative exists. So by what is the you, you remember the neutral Leibniz theorem, or you can just use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Do you agree? What would be so? You tell me this. This is f of x. We are going to write this as we will use this notation. So capital F will be CDF, and small f will be PDF. Okay. So what would be the relationship between f x and Small fx and capital fx. Can I can you tell me how to remove the integral? The differentiation. How will you uh, differentiate? So this is nothing but capital F of x. Just a second. So this is what is this? So if you say the integral is this. I don't understand why is this reconnecting. Okay. So do you remember the new? What is the Newton Leibniz theorem saying? Dfx. If you differentiate both sides, what will you get? You'll get something like. So you'll get. You put this value here, right? I'll. If you do not remember, and you will have dx dx. Minus f of minus infinity d d my d constant by d x is this zero, which is equal to f x of x. So if you differentiate the distribution function, you will get the CDF. If you differentiate, you will get the PDF. Okay, clear. Do you know the Newton Leibniz theorem, or do I need to show why it is true? Yes, sir. Yes, then it's okay. So, by if you just take write this by fundamental theorem of calculus and differentiate both sides, you'll get that you get this. So the so the derivative of the CDF is equal to the PDF. Now, if you have really understood, tell me what is this property. So if you want to find it for a small interval, what will it be? So that is this. Probability of x between b and b plus delta. What is this? Integration of, zero to zero. Integration of b to b plus delta f and f fx dx so if limit delta tends to 0 so do you agree f of x plus delta so if you have something like this so this is nothing but it's very small so this area you can simply write by f of p into delta yes or no so if yeah. this is very small, this this area, what will it be? This is your delta. This what is yeah. this increment? This is your delta, and what is the height of the rectangle? That is f of f of b, right? So you will get f of b into delta. So this is a infinitesimal amount of probability that you are getting. So if 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 delta is equal to zero, then you will have zero. 
There's no doubt about that. Delta, how, whatever small is very small limit is, if it is in the limit tends to zero, then you will get a multiplication with delta. This is the idea. So if you want to get a probability, you will not get probability until and unless you take a limit. That's or a range. Sorry about the background noise. So we will be discussing some important distributions now. So for the first one we'll be doing is a uniform distribution. So what is a uniform distribution or a uniform AB? That X can take. X has. Equal probability. Of taking values. Between. A and B. OK. This is this is also known as the. Uniform distribution. So the first question is. So uh, the, so what will be the PDF look, looking like? So can uh, let us draw the PDF. So between A and B. This is some constant C. Right. F of U. This is some constant C and otherwise it is zero. Is this okay? Yes or no? This is your PDF. Mm -hmm. Others, please, if you have a doubt, please ask. I have I'm using this definition over here for a uniform distribution between A and B. It is equal equal probable between any the values are equal probable between A and B. So and that is some C. So please tell me what would be the value of C. Uh, will B minus A into C be one because of the probability will be one. So how, how will I write this? So what did I tell F of integral A to B F of X? Here we are writing OK minus infinity to infinity is equal to one, right? We have said yes. we have told this so. So. So minus infinity to A. F of U du plus A to B f of u du i'm just going to write it once to show that how to do this is going to be one right what are these values zero they're given to be zero if it is not within a and b zero and zero so you have integral a to b f of u du is equal to one so what is f of u that is c constant right I've given given you the value C, right? So now. As Irfan was telling me C of B minus A will be equal to one, right? Yes or no? Yes, yes. So C will be one by B minus A. So your distribution will be. This. So one by. One by B minus A will be your distribution. So in this case, okay. So what would be the expected value from yesterday's session? Expected value of X. Or U in our case, we are using U as the random variable. Tell me. What what was your continuous? What was your discrete distribution? It was. X P of X is equal to X. So what will be this in the continuous distribution? 
integration of the product of x and p, p of x equal to x. The u, u and p of so uh, here, u. Yes. P of u. What is p of u? P of oh um, oh no sorry so sorry p, f of uh, f of. Uh, so PMF is equivalent to PDF. I told you today. Yes. yes. So because we are taking a weight at every point, we are weighting by the probability of the PDF. So f of u du right between a and b because outside it is zero anyways right. Yes, yes. So what is this integral going to be? U by, what is this value? For all values, it is B minus A. Right, C is, F of U is equal to B minus A between A and B. So what is this? So you will have B squared minus A squared by two B minus A is equal to b plus a by 2. Yes or no? Uh. b plus a by 2. So if it is b plus what what is the intuition? So if it is b, very simple, right? So if you have a scale between 0 and 1. So if you sample things from that uniformly, where will you get the mean number of around where will you get the mean? Or where will be your center of mass? You can select anywhere around the center, right? You can select either to the left or to the right. But eventually, you will only the the average will only be 0 0.5. Do you agree or not? Yes. So this is going to be b plus a by two. Now tell me what will be the variance of this distribution? What do I need to find for finding the variance? Variance of u, what will it be? What is the, we derived the formula yesterday. What is the formula for variance of u? Expectation of uh, u minus, expect, uh, sorry, expectation of u square minus expectation of u whole square. Correct. So with this we already know, right? This we have already found expected value of u. Oh, it's still stuck. Some network issues on my tablet. So anyways, just a moment. Yeah, so the, this value we already know. That is b plus a by 2, right? And so we will be using, we will only be finding u square. So the integral of u square, what will it be? u square by b minus a, right? du between a and b, just the lotus. b plus, a plus b by 2 whole square. Uh, let us see what will it be. So u square will be u square into, so this is nothing but f of u du into u square, right? This is the integral that you need to find. Uh, where is the uh, this is the integral that you need to find uh, so what is this going to be b cube minus a cube by 3 into b minus a b cube minus a cube by 3 into b minus a very good so what is this b b minus a b square plus a b plus b a square by 3 into b minus a so you have variance of u is equal to b square plus a b plus a square by 3 minus b plus a whole square by 4 yes or no so uh, what will the what will this become? It will become a squared plus. Just tell me now what is this? So this is going to be four times b squared plus four times a squared plus four times a b minus three times 
This one minus two AB plus A square by twelve. Yes. So you will have B square minus A square minus two minus six AB by twelve, which is equal to B minus A whole square by twelve. So why is this result interesting? You can have a physical significance of this result as well. So let us take U A equal to zero and B equal to one, right? This is very important distribution, very fundamental distribution. Whatever you do, you train GANs, you try to find out change in probability distributions. This is very important distribution. Because this is very, because between 0 and 1, can you tell me why is it important? We'll do the question. Between Because it's between 0 and 1, you have the CDF. Right? Between the CDF is always between 0 and 1. We'll do that anyways. We'll see. Always. CDF will always be CDF is the integral of minus infinity to x, right? So it's the probability of x is between x is less than x. <laughs> so the probability x is less than x, probability is always less than one and greater than zero. So yes. that is very, very important distribution. So you can use the uniform distribution to model CDFs. So that's why it's very uniform. Zero one is a very important distribution. Pay attention. So Uniform zero one, if you have here, so you you can tell me that a mean will be around 0 0.5. But can you tell me by the intuition what is the going to be the variance of this? Just from intuition, we have also derived b minus a by 12. So see, so your it should have been something like around this. So 1 by 12 will be your variance. Around 1 by 3. So it's I would have said maybe 1 by 4, but it's around 1 by 4. So it's very close to the center. So most of the times you would have values near the center. Right? So variance will be between 0, 1 by 12. So your first standard deviation and so on will be around 1 by 12 from the center. Right, big B is 0, B and 1. So variance of U is my 1 minus 0 by 12 whole square. So okay, we'll see this in more in details. So let's do some properties of CDFs first and then let's go to some questions. So can you tell me why CDF is monotonically non-decreasing? So my question is f of x of y is greater than f of x of x if y is greater than x. So we, you all are very good at doing proofs. I have seen. So tell me, how do I do this proof? Any idea? So the first property of a CDF is monotonically non-decreasing function. So it's a increasing function, sort of, roughly speaking. Something like this. It should be something like this, always. It's never going to decrease. People were telling me the proofs last day. So if anybody can think how to do it. I think the definition, if you just think about it, you will be able to write the proof. OK. So what is the definition of f of x taking a value y? What is this definition? This is y to infinity. Uh, y to infinity minus infinity to y. Oh, sorry, minus infinity to y. Sorry, sorry. Uh, f of uh, yes. So, but what is what does it physically mean? It means that x is less than equal to y, right? Always remember this. It's very easy to remember. What is the what is the difference? What is the difficulty? Just the probability that is that a random variable takes value less than a random variable, right? Less than a value. Here it is y, for example. Right? This is the CDF. Similarly, what is P of x? F of x of x? This? Yes or no? So, what does this F of x less than y mean? Do you remember? What does this mean?
What is the set that I am mapping the probabilities to? Yesterday we did, or even the last day before that, using event spaces and all. It is the probability of all those events such that they map to the real number line between minus infinity and y, right? This is the event, right? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. I'm not understanding. What is the difficulty? Just tell me. Don't remember the function. So this was, I told you how many times this is my x inverse of minus infinity to y, right? The entire set will be there, x inverse of y. So you remember this uh, picture, right? So yesterday only we uh, finally discussed and everybody was happy with it. So let us write the top set as E of y and this set as E of x. Yeah, tell me. So x, your random variable taking a value less than y, what does it mean? Which events are they mapping to? OK. So do you remember that the random variable maps from the sample space to the real number line? Right, so and any outcome O will be mapped from the sample space to a value of some X in the real number line. Yes. So what does random variable taking value less than X mean? So this means that on the real number line, every value from minus infinity to X is being considered, right? Mm -hmm. So for every value in minus infinity to X, there is some outcome in the, in the event space or uh, in mm -hmm. the sample space. So that will form a subset of the sample space. Mm -hmm. So if you form a subset of the event, some sample space, that is a part of the event space. We have defined, mm -hmm. described all this in the, first day. Yes, so minus infinity to x will be nothing but e of x. Right. Hmm. So e of x, if I define this, so this is all the events that map between minus infinity to x. Why am I writing this? Because if your y is greater than this, I think that day Brahmojit was telling me the proof. If y is greater than x, so this will nothing but be e of x plus some Union with some other set, yes or no? Yes. Right. So this is you're going to add this. So probability of x less than. So let us write this as x. So less than x will be nothing but union of x less than y union of x between x and y. Yes or no? Sorry, yes. just not yes. This is y. Where is it y? This, right? X is smaller than y, I have said here, right? Very good. So, do you agree that x less than x will be a, or this is e of x, will be a subset of e of y? Yes or no? You can clearly see in the figure. So you're just going to add some more numbers. If you add some more numbers, you will have more events that correspond to those numbers. Yes or no? This is just the red and the green will be everything between zero and Y, right? Minus mm, infinity yes. and Y. Tell uh, me where yes. is the doubt? Others also, others, please tell me where is the doubt. Sir, from here itself, we will be getting close. Huh? 
from here itself it is isn't it getting proved that for property the property this if this is proved so we said monotonicity of prob probability is if a smaller set is we uh, i think bromo is proved it if a smaller set is a subset of a set so what does it mean that the probability of ex will be less than probability of ey yes or no because they can be written as sum of probabilities Dis disjoint events can be written as sum of probabilities right you remember that proof mm. that we did first so this means that what is the probability of e of x that is nothing but probability of x less than x and this is y less than y so now tell me what is the doubt i want to know otherwise how will i explain all i did since x is greater than y so x the minus infinity to y will also con contain minus infinity to x yes or no and if i take the pre image the events will be a subset the e of x will be a subset of e of y right that's it if it is a subset then the probability of e of x e of y will be more than probability of e of x so your cdf typical cdf will look something like what is the what is going to be the cdf at minus infinity probability x less than minus infinity zero and probability of x less than my infinity one correct so it will be something like this all cdfs will look something like this depending on the range or the range set of the random variable right this will be your and it is an increasing function so do you agree increasing between 0 and 1 for discrete this was something like this i had proved that i have shown this this is for the discrete case right sir so why at x tends to minus infinity this variable tend to 0 what is the what is there any event where the random variable can map something less than infinity no no so then this is nothing but phi right this event uh. probability of phi equal to 0 and this is nothing but the sample sample space right because they always random variable will map something to less than infinity yes or no yes so that's why so number 2 this is all this is a very simple proof which is saying that your expected value can be written as as the as this integral can you tell me how to, how to do this what is the expected value of a random variable minus infinity to x right minus infinity to infinity f of x dx do you agree yes so now you tell me how do i bring capital fx so it's just substitution just remember your class 10 11 a calculus how do i do this So first of all, let me break this up into two integrals. You will see why. Minus infinity to zero, x f of x dx plus zero to infinity because I have written x greater than zero and here. So whenever you are proving something, see what is in the question. So less than zero and greater than zero. So less than zero and greater than zero. I'll break it up into two two parts. Similarly, right? X less than zero and x greater than zero. So minus infinity to zero, zero to infinity. Now tell me, how do I solve these two integrals? Copy. yeah tell me i want to bring capital f right i want to bring the distribution function not the density function here it is a density function right small f or the pdf i want to bring the cdf into this 
So how do I bring the CDF? Do you remember the relationship between the CDF and the PDF? DFX, DX, what is it? It's for your small f, small f of x. Then you, you can replace capital F of x, DX as this? DF of x. Yes or no? Everybody is mm -hmm. okay with this? Mm -hmm. Others also, they are okay? Yes. Sir. Yes. So also you can write D of 1 minus Fx minus as f of x, yes or no? Why am I writing this? It will become very evident. Right? This is also true. Uh -huh. If you differentiate this, you will get minus of minus of f of x or not. Uh -huh. So that's why both are equivalent. So one of these I will replace by this. One of these I'll replace by this. Tell me which of them will I replace by? 1 minus fx and which of them I will replace by fx. Where there is infinity, I will replace by 1 minus fx. Why? Because from fx of infinity, what is it? 1. Very good. I want to make it 0. And wherever there is minus infinity, I will put fx of minus infinity is 0. So I will replace this as minus infinity to 0. x fx or dfx, right? I'm, I'm just putting this one. And here yeah. I am going to put minus of zero to infinity. I'm going to put two, right? X of d of one minus fx. Yes or no? Correct? Yes. So now what will you do? Tell me now you now you know what to do. Very simple. Give me the idea. I'll give you a hint. This is the question that used to every every board exam had one question from this. This is a hint. Integration yes, by parts. Integration, integration by parts. Yes. Correct. So first one will be x fx. If you take the integral of a derivative, it's just fx minus minus infinity. So minus infinity to zero to zero. X, if you differentiate, x will be differentiated. This will be integrated. So you will have fx of x dx, right? Yes or no? Right? Do it, do it. Minus. What will you have for the second one? Now you tell me what will you have? Go ahead, Hussein. Which one will I integrate? Which one? Times, will I... Okay, ball. Minus minus fx. Yes. Uh, plus. Integration of zero to infinity, one minus, minus right? Oh, ha, minus so, one. Ha. Integral, minus. integral of u v, u v. Yes, yes, yes. I, I had taken it out of the bracket. That's ah, right. it's okay, it's okay. Yes. So, uh, minus uh, zero to infinity integration of uh, one minus f x. Very good. So, because these will become one on differentiation. Very good. So what are these terms? Why did I take one minus fx? We'll understand now. So what is going to be this term? Zero, right? So at zero also it is zero and at minus infinity, this is zero. X is equal to zero and zero at X is equal to minus infinity. As Hussein had told me that at minus infinity, you have capital FX is equal to zero. And similarly, this is equal to one at X is equal to infinity. And this is equal to zero at x is equal to zero, right? Yeah. So this term, these two terms will always go to zero. Both the endpoints are zero. Yes or no? Yes. So what is the integral going to be? So this is very important. This is one of the very interesting problems that you will get in your uh, 
uh, failure systems wherever you have exponential distributions and so on so i think you will you may have this later in your courses as well so this is engineers use this directly so this is greater than 0 x greater than 0 x less than 0 so for exponential distributions so we only will have this so if t if this is 0 right so if if this is 0 say t less than 0 you have probability 0 so t cannot be less than 0 so you are calculating time maybe so then this will go to 0 you will only be left with this this is very very standard formula that people use in failure systems failure of components that you may have studied at least we had them so if time is greater than 0 there will be no cases where time is less than 0 so that this probability will be zero the next part so it will become that what we were discussing so before we go to today's the plants lectures for today so we will do a interesting thing which is as i was saying telling you the university of a uniform distribution so there is a universality in universality of the sorry universality of the uniform distribution so what is the uniform distribution going to give you so for any pdf this is the this is the cdf you agree yes and that is between 0 and 1 right i'll give you the intuition first then prove this so the range is range of fx is always between so f maps 0 to 1 correct range maps from the from this probability space to 0 and 1 right mm -hmm. or in our case r to 0 1 because first we convert it to r and then we use the probability right real numbers so x will map between these two and then we f of x will map between real numbers to 0 1 real yes or no yes and if it, if f is continue if it is increasing strictly increasing then do you agree that inverse exist f inverse will exist because for every value in the y you have a unique x right Yes or no? Others, is it okay? So for every value of y, you will. So what? What is it? So y is equal to f of x. So f inverse y is equal to x if and only if f is bijective, right? Remember this: one one and on two. So there is a one one map between y and x, right? Yes. So if there is a one one map, you will have this as the definition. So now you will tell me. So now your x's will of course be distributed as f inverse u, right? so we will do this this is the formal proof we will do that but do you don't you believe that it will be distributed as f inverse u like it will have the cdf x will have cdf of cdf of f inverse u because u is between 0 and 1 it can take any values where u is a uniform distribution yes or no Yes, sir. Sir, you have a question? No, no, no. I need your answer. Okay. Uh, so, is it clear that between zero and one, if I take any value of from the uniform, so from the uniform, I can, I will choose all values equally or not? I have equal probability of choosing all values between zero and one. Yes or no? Uniform zero one. Say I choose point five. Sir, 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 can you repeat yeah. the last two seconds? Yeah. So I am saying that for a uniform zero one, all the values between zero and one have equal probability of being chosen. 
you did you hear yes right yes, so yes, yes. yeah so x is distributed as u so if i get one value from uniform 0 1 so this will always be between uniformly chosen between this y range yes or no right so f inverse of that value x distributed from u will be chosen always from this y and so you will be getting some values on the x set which is on the random variable set right and if you choose that uniformly you will get say there's a steep increase if you, you if you select uniformly you will also see, see the steep increase on the denominator we'll see why it is true just see do you want get the intuition that if you do the inverse of 0 and 1 you will get all the values in the random variable space according to the pdf or the cdf f so you are able to transform a uniform random variable this is also called transformation of u to any random variable right of your choice so if you are given u you can sample so if you write a computer program you are all programmers so if you are if you are told to sample from one distribution we which cdf you know what will you do you are told to sample from a distribution fx right so how will you sample if you if you are going to use just the uniform distribution so you will sample x according to f inverse of u that's it If you sample according to x inverse of u, you will get the appropriate sample. So, for example, you will choose, you do np dot, you will do uh, whatever Java dot random, whatever math dot random of zero and one, and then you will be just putting the f inverse function and tell tell the computer to sample bit of from that distribution, and you will be able to sample from any CDF distribution. Do you understand? First step one, sample uniform and then tell the computer to sample according to f inverse of u right so you will get the probability let's see how to do that so say your function has a form of 1 minus e to the power minus x this is a valid for x greater than 0 this is a valid cdf or not why why is it a valid cdf you can to be a bit louder it is increasing and one one it's increasing then no no there's no integral right so f or f is the integrated form f is the cdf so, so f, f of, of infinity is one. Correct. And f of zero is zero. Yes. So this is the proper CDF. So now tell me what how will I get f inverse? What will be the f inverse of this? What is going to be the f inverse? So if I write y equal to 1 minus e to the power minus x, how to find the inverse function? We have to express y in terms of x and then that's it. So you will write e to the power minus x is equal to 1 minus y. Yes. And you will take log on both sides. So you'll have minus x is equal to log of 1 minus y. So what did I tell? So f inverse of x is equal to y so you will and i told you this is your f inverse function which is so x if you sample according to minus log of right 
minus log of 1 minus x, you will be getting the appropriate distribution 1 minus u, right? This is equal to f inverse of u, right? So can you tell me if do you do you see that 1 minus u is equal to u in distribution? For a uniform distribution, if you sample from 1 minus u, it is equal equivalent to saying it's sampling from u, right? So if you, for example, if you sam sample 0.25, you will get 0.75, 1 minus u in 1 minus u's case. And if you sample 0.5, will get, so it will just be flipped, right? So there will be no change in distribution. All of them will have the same probabilities, right? They are the same distribution. So this is, they are symmetric about point, about that one line, right? So 1 minus u is u in distribution. So you can sample from minus log of u. So you sample u's and tell me the probabilities of that function. So x is distributed as by this CDF. So x has this CDF. So if if you want x to have a particular CDF f, you can just sample from the u distribution this way. So this is going to be sample. You are going to transform any variable to random variable to a uniform random variable. This is how you do it, right? Just take the inverse of the CDF and put u to it. Put the parameter as u. We'll see these in more in details, then you'll understand. So but of how to do transformations and so on. That will be catching you, catching more of the understanding then. But uh, before you go into that, let's un let's understand the procedure that you have understood, right? How to do it, finding the inverse and then putting the value u. That's what you're going to do to get this. And now we will show you why it is that that the f inverse maps between x u and x why does it map so if say x is distributed as f do you agree so then f of x is also a random variable yes or no if f of x is a random variable or not so you can write y is equal to like you were doing yesterday like x plus y we were transforming one random variable to another do you remember that Lotus for formulation we did? Y is equal to small fx and so on. So this is a function of a random variable, which is also a function, right? So from sigma, you go to chi. From there, you go to f of x, right? Between 0 and 1. Do you agree? So every element in a omega will be mapped to some or every set will be mapped to some value between 0 and 1. Yes or no? Okay, let's see what I'm doing. So uh, you have to show that f inverse is distributed, f inverse u is distributed as uniform distribution. So if you can show that the fx is a uniform distribution, you are done. So this procedure will be right. So how do you show that? Can you tell me? So if I told you to find the distribution of fx, how do you, do you find it? CDF of fx. Capital Y less than Y? Yes or no? So whenever you are having a transformation of a random variable, you write the random variable and find the, for a part, fix a particular value of Y and find it, what is the probability of having a value less than Y? Tell me, is it okay or do you want, what do you want not understand? Sir, can you please explain once more? No, no, I'll explain. I'm asking which part is not clear. So I'm telling f of x is a random variable, right? So x is a random variable, yes or no? Yes. yes. So if I take any function on a random variable, will that be a random variable or not? Yes, yes. Correct? Yes. yes, it will become a random variable. So now I am saying, if I am told to find a CDF of a random variable, what will I do? I will put that CDF Y less than Y. Yes. 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 Y
yes or no so just don't think of f of x for the time being don't think of it just think that y is a random variable so i can just write y less than y is a series yes yes so what now i will replace a y as f of x random y is nothing but f of x yes or no yes yes here yeah, yeah in in this case we are considering y as f of like the, the cdf of random variable x right correct yes very good so now what will i do next if i consider f f is strictly increasing so inverse exists yes so i can take inverse on both sides for a increasing function f of x is less than y means inverse will also be less than that right yeah for an increasing function t f of x1 f of x2 if of f of x2 is greater than f of x1 then you can say clearly that x is x2 is greater than x1 for an increasing function yes 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 so you can write this as just take inverse inverse of this so x will be less than equal to f inverse of y yes or no yes now you know the distribution of f of, of x do you know or not i have i told you x is distributed as y as f of as fx i have told you Yeah. So this is not going to be f of x of f x inverse of y, which is nothing but y. What is the f of f inverse? Like square of square root. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Identity. Identity function. Identity of y, which is nothing but yes. y. Yes. So your f of y, f y of y is nothing but y. What does it mean? What is your f of y? Derivative of y? Yeah, yeah, derivative. Which is one. Mm -hmm. Y is between zero and one. So is it uniform or not? So y is distributed as uniform zero one. Okay. Sir, so what does the f inverse f inverse of u represent? Like, what are we doing? We we know the CDF of a random variable x. and okay. we are trying to transform that into a uniform variable right correct so, or we are doing trying to do the other way around you are trying to you know that if, uh, the the distribution of a random variable f you want to sample from it using the uniform distribution sample using uniform so uniform distribution sampling is very easy right you can select any between 0 and 1 but it is not very easy to sample any distribution So it's a bit difficult, right? In that case, what will you do? You will sample y, and then sample u, or which is a uniform distribution, and then sample x according to f inverse of u. Understood? Okay. So, okay, it's still not clear. So if you sample a number between zero and one, right? So you will say sample this. There's this number between zero and one, say point point four. So f inverse of point four will give me some will give me some value, or yes or no? Yes, yes. F inverse of point four will give me some value according to this f. Yeah, the cumulative distribution. Yeah. Exactly. So f of f inverse of point four will give me value of x according to minus infinity to point four, right? Mm hmm. Yes. So that. f inverse of 0.4 so if you sample from uniform say you get uniform 01 you get say 0.4 so your uniform so x if it is distributed as f you will be getting nothing but minus infinity to f inverse of 0.4 that's what your x will be sampled between from that's the idea your cdf will be this so this is the same probability as the f so how fast is your f improve increasing how fast is your f so this is the cdf and not is the cdf of x right so cdf yes. is this so it's not how you are it is not the weight you have to take the different derivative to get the weight like we did here okay right 
right yes so these are the this is the cdf of y cdf of y you are transforming y to uniform distribution to any other distribution right okay. of your choice and why is it true you can see from the second distribution so f of x is always equal to uniform distribution right any uniform so your x will be distributed as f inverse u do you agree or not if of f of x is distributed as u x will be distributed as f inverse u yes or no if it is 1 1 just taking inverse on both sides yes 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 so that's why i proved this this is why this is known as the universality of a uniform distribution so if you can prove this then you can use this property anywhere just find the inverse and put the value u that will do it for you i hope that it makes sense so now i will do one application question and then I'll, these two will be your homework please please post these these are just va putting values to my to the homework to this question that i'm going to do so this is known as the markov inequality what does it say the value that a random variable takes a value greater than epsilon so if let this be x f of x so let this value take a value greater than epsilon is can be written by expectation of that of any function by the value of the function at that epsilon so there is a bound so your probability that x is greater than epsilon is bounded by an expectation of any function any monotonically non decreasing function such that x maps between your sample space so we have considered r plus over here so x is mapping between omega to 0 comma 1 0 comma infinity okay you can convert your x to 0 to infinity like mod you can if you want if it is not between 0 and infinity you can put mod of x right that will be between 0 and infinity so it is without loss of generality that this will hold yes or no mm -hmm. x to if x is between minus infinity to infinity you can convert this into 0 to infinity by just putting a mod so with this is this can be done without loss of generality so what i am meaning about this is i can prove this as an inequality there is there are very interesting inequalities for example what is the probability of a random variable being away from the mean so this is the mean of the random variable so being away from the mean is related to its variance so it's less than the variance of the random variable so you see so being epsilon away from the mean so if the random variable is epsilon away from the mean it means that it is related to the variance so we, that's what i intuited in the first day right so variance is the uh, the separation from the mean right so there should be a relation between the probability how much probable is it to be away up outside the epsilon right if the epsilon is very very large it should be zero it should not be anything else so let's do this question you will understand then so you tell me how can i write fx can i write this as f of x indicator of x greater than epsilon plus f of x indicator of x less than epsilon is this allowed or not yesterday we were seeing indicators in details right so let's take a value of y less than epsilon so this will become zero and this will become 1 so you'll be just left as f y right l h is f of y r h is l of y now tell me what is the doubt whenever i see people quiet i have to understand you have a doubt tell me so any yes or no indicator function this will become 1 so indicator of x greater than epsilon is equal to 1 if x greater than epsilon and 0 if x less than epsilon right yes. so do you agree that 
this can be written this way. I'm just breaking this up into two parts. So if your f function is something like this, and you have epsilon over here, this part I'm writing over here, and this part I'm writing over here. Okay. If x is say greater than epsilon and it is z, so this part will go to zero. Yes. And only the first part will remain. Yes or no? Only yes. at a time only one part can remain. Yes or no? Both cannot remain at a single time. So if only one part can remain, so it's f x equal to x f x. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So now tell me. Since I have said it's a monotonically non decreasing function, which is mapping from R to R plus, so f of x is always greater than zero, I have assumed. Correct? Assumption? Important assumption is uh, it's mapping between minus infinity to infinity to zero and zero to infinity. R plus is between zero and infinity. So your f of x will be between zero and Zero and infinity, or f of x will be greater than zero. Yes or no? I hope this is clear. If this is true, can I put this to lower bound this by zero? Can I do this? This term will be greater than zero or not? If f of x is greater than zero, this term will be greater than equal to zero. Yes or no? Indicator is either zero or one. f of x is greater than equal to zero. Then the product of an indicator and a and a random and a variable which is greater than zero that is is greater than zero. Yes or no? Do you agree that f of x indicator of x less than epsilon is greater than zero? Since yes, sir. f of x is greater than zero. So if I remove this part, can I write f of x is greater than equal to f x indicator of x less than epsilon? Yes or no? Or sorry, greater than epsilon. I am cancelling. I am cutting this part out. So I am removing a positive quantity. If I remove a non-negative quantity, your right hand side will become less weighty. It will lose its weight. So you will have a lesser than sign instead of equal to yes or no. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so if you remove a positive term, so if say y is equal to a plus b, right? And b is great, b equal to greater than zero. B, hello. This is a and this is b. So if b is greater than zero, right? So y has to be greater than a or not? So because it is more, it is some terms more than a. You have added b to a to get y. So now if I take expectation on both sides, which is a linear operation, we had shown you expectation if sum of it's a it's a monotonically increasing function. For functions that are greater, expectation will always be more. There's, so because if you have more weight, a class of functions that have more weight will always have greater value, expected value, of course. So if your class has only 200 or more weight people, and somebody another class has only 100 or more, so you will only have higher expected value for 200 or more class. So. And I am saying it's monotonically increasing function. So do you agree that f of x is greater than or equal to f of epsilon? Yes. So I can put f of epsilon for f of x and still maintain this inequality. It will just be a weaker inequality, right? f of epsilon 
into expected value of the indicator of x greater than epsilon. So what is the expected value of an indicator? Do you remember? So for any monotonically positive function, this is true. What is the expected value of an indicator? Which is did it last day? The probability of the probability yeah. of this event, right? Yes, yes. So we had done last day. We uh, I think Mono Shrija proved it last day, or or was it? I don't remember. Yes. So probably said that it is the nothing but the probability of the event, right? For any indicator, because zero into probability of a plus one into zero into probability of one minus a into one into probability of a. So this is nothing but a is greater than Epsilon is less than equal to E of Fx by F of Epsilon. Right? So Chebyshev's inequality and Chernoff's inequality, just you have to choose F. Your, your homework is to choose F accordingly. Choose F and use Markov. Then hence will be proved. So what is the what are the characteristics that f should have? F should be remember f cannot be any function. It has to be monotonically increasing, and f must map between r and r plus or r plus to r plus. R plus since x maps between x maps between r uh, your samples place to r plus your your function must map between r plus to r plus so your function must be between is must be something like this always your f of x function should be defined on the positive values positive int positive real numbers and should always give you positive real numbers these two conditions you have to validate for any function and use this inequality to Prove this. I think you will be able to do it. Yes or no? You have to just do is choose an f. Any f if you choose, if validates this function, this inequality will be true, right? For any f that is monotonically increasing and maps between positive numbers to positive numbers, this inequality will hold. Yes or no? So please try. Uh, you have three, four days now to try these things. Yeah, go ahead, Jose. You have a, go ahead. Your your voice is breaking. Yeah. Uh, you you are, you are asking what this inequality physically means, right? Yes or no? Yes. So you will be able, only able to understand the importance of this inequality once you have proved this, this statement at least. So let us consider this statement, which is also an equivalent of the Markov. I will, if you see Wednesday, by Wednesday, I would like to see the solutions. See, everybody is giving solutions to the homeworks. I'm really liking it. Please look, go through them. Whichever I'm putting a like is correct solution. And if it is, if it is wrong, I will put the solution myself. So see, why is it important? So say this is the mean value, right? And this is the variance. So in Gaussian, it's very important. So this is the variance or the standard deviation, whatever you have, right? So from this equation, you can say that the probability of you being outside, outside the way, outside the standard deviation becomes smaller and smaller. Right? As epsilon increases, your denominator will become very, very large compared to your variance. And you will become very very small. So you, as epsilon will be very large from mu, your way your this term probability of being away from the mean, which is x minus mu, right, greater than epsilon. Mm -hmm. So this is your epsilon term. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Now you are getting the significance will become smaller and smaller. So you will your yeah go ahead. 
thing in inequality possible where the variance will be so small that I B number, the probability that I B outside the standard deviation is more. Very good. It will always be. It can be possible. Think of a direct direct function where it is infinity such that all the mass is concentrated here. So what is this prob probability distribution? Probability of x is equal to a. X greater than equal to a is one, and probability of x yeah. less than a is equal to zero. So everything is here. So what is the what is the mean of this distribution? Mean of x is a, yes or no? Yes, yes. Why is it a? Because this is the integral of x yeah. minus infinity to x. So it's a Dirac function. So you will get only at a you have one. Other all terms you have zero, right? Uh, f of a is equal to one, and f of b not equal to a is zero. So then you get a. Similarly, what will be the variance? It will be expected value of x square minus expected value of x. So this will become zero because this is integral of a square Dirac function of x equal to a dx, which is also equal to a square. So a square minus a square will be zero. So if you have a very small variance, it means will mean that you will not be able to go outside. So this is an extreme case. So having a small variance in a Gaussian case, it can be something like this. We'll see a Gaussian distribution just now. So you will not be able to go very away from the distribution. So for example, I will show you, then it will become very much more clearer. So in this next, uh, next few. Next hour up to one uh, up to 11, we will be doing some more very important distributions and then we'll be calling it a day. So more on continuous distribution. So there is something called an exponential distribution, which is also that failure distribution that I was telling you or so yesterday somebody told me about that uh, machine that can be that can have a possibility of failure after one hour. So this is that. So it's a continuous analog of. Can you tell me what is it? A continuous analog of which distribution? Yesterday we did that discrete distribution. That that's continuous analog. It is. Sir, is it Poisson's Poisson's distribution? No. no. Um. I'm giving you that intuition. No, that uh, once it has happened, it will not. It, like a particular time has elapsed again. Oh, you will geometric geometric. Exactly geometric. See, it's like the geometric geometric will be something like this at discrete values and it's continuously decreasing is an exponential, right? Sir, doesn't the exponential distribution have to do with infinity? Like uh, an event that occurs once every interval or something like that. Like well, I, the reason is that Poisson distribution was that Poisson uh, distribution also deals with intervals of time, area, or uh, see area. Poisson process will be that. So Poisson, if you to, we are not going to discuss Poisson process because of lack of time, but if you have a Poisson process, the interarrival times are exponential distributions. Oh. So oh, right. for a, yes, so say from one to another, you will have an exponential distribution if it is a Poisson process. Otherwise. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see like if uh, if time permits, maybe in the later stages we'll do Poisson processes as well. But uh, that depends on the uh, interests of others as well. We are already seeing a very low number of people. But let's see. Uh, see the more on uh, these exponential distributions would be what would be the time of failure? The intuition is so, or life of a time, lifetime of a bulb. Do you remember that your uh, class 12 physics and chemistry where you had the decay rate? Remember that? So a radioactive element would decay according to some probability you had a half life of that radioactive element. So every particle in the radioactive thing would have a time to decay to half. So it, they see the probability that it would be P would stay after t would decrease exponentially. 
so here t is life of a radioactive substance do you remember that those rate equations used to write were all exponential e to the power minus lambda t and they used to decay to how decay to half life using log 2 we used to do a, a0 by at why you used to do that because of the exponential distribution the assumption that you used to take the exponential can model radioactive substances decay of like uh, failure of a system very well right so why are we learning all this distribution because they model physical characteristics very well so this distribution came from that radioactive physics only so all these distributions that you have we are learning they are learned to actually model physical processes for example exponential distribution if you remember the radioactive decay right so you had the rate equation first order rate equation remember that so your df dx was proportional to yes you are proportional to lambda times the concentration of a remember that So this was your rate equation. This is exactly a distribution. This is exactly an exponential distribution. Mm -hmm. If you integrate this, you will get an exponential, right? Right. So your decay is modeled by an exponential distribution. If you care, if you really like that physics and math, now you will get feel that feel good factor. So that physics was being mapped using an exponential distribution, and you were being taught this way, so that you because you did not know the exponential distribution that time. so that yes so you the both ways are correct but so you you assume the first order dynamics and then found this equation but since but the probability that the particle remains after time t and does not evaporate to photons and uh, heat is will be given by this probability which is an exponential which is the mass or the bulk characteristics of the substance so i want you to understand this intuition that's why i spent 5 minutes explaining the exponentials so beautiful distribution because every as you calculate that uh, different characteristics of the exponential you will understand how beautiful it is let's do it one by one sir how do you realize this is going to be exponential distribution with the radioactive decay yeah so radioactive decay because it the probability of it staying for a very very long time is very it depends upon your half life or your yeah. lambda or the rate rate parameter so faster the rate parameter is your radioactive element will decay faster so the probability of right, exponential yes so at eventually as you go even higher and higher in time your probability of seeing that particle will decrease now you yes So let's see now. Let's do the calculations, which is not that interesting, but let's do it anyways. So x is distributed as exponential lambda. So lambda is the decay parameter. So I have said f of x. So I was telling you, let's write t here. It will be interesting. T x is so uninteresting. Time will give you a proper sense. Okay. i don't like making it uninteresting so tell me first question what is the value of c so how do i find it can you your voice is breaking so what will we see very good yes correct so f of t 0 to infinity dt will be equal to 1 right because t less than 0 is 0 probability of t less than 0 is equal to 0 so we will not mm -hmm. consider that so this is going to be t e to the power minus lambda t integral from 0 to infinity d t so let's keep c outside for the time being 0 is equal to 1 so what will i do i will write t as lambda t and by lambda okay is this okay i'm just doing substitution yeah. first uh, so uh, this will be nothing but e to the power minus lambda t 0 to infinity agreed uh, uh, this is equal to 1 so c so what is this term 1 minus e to the power minus infinity which is equal to lambda 
This is zero in the limit. C is uh, equal to. How will I? E to the power minus lambda t. E to the power minus lambda t. How will I integrate? Oh, no, no, so I, so I t I made equal to lambda t. So d of lambda t d of lambda t is lambda d t. Lambda is constant. That's why I when I put that lambda inside, I put lambda outside. Uh, one by lambda outside, and similarly I integrated that. So it's just integral of e to the power minus x. That's it. If it is integral of minus x, so it is integral of e to the power minus x. Dear, yeah. yeah. Let's do the next question. So c is equal to lambda. So you have the pro the distribution PDF would be lambda e to the power minus lambda t, right? Okay. Now tell me what should I do? To find the CDF, let's find the CDF. So, and your homework here would be because you have four four days at least. I, I'm thinking of doing a class on Thursday, maybe, but not before that. So, homework would be find the expected value of oh, it's already there, and also try to find variance of t. I will do this maybe in another way, but. Is it? Let's see. We'll do it. So, can you tell me what is f of t or the? This is one. What is the CDF of the random variable? What is the CDF of the random variable? We have to integrate from uh, minus infinity to t. Okay. C lambda e to the power t, right? Yes. Yes. So minus infinity to zero is zero. Do you agree? Minus infinity to zero is zero or not? Because yes, yeah, zero. Yes, we have defined this this way. F of t is less than zero. T less than equal to zero is zero. So this integral is only this. Which is nothing but e to the power minus lambda t from zero to t, because it will become a negative. So I'm inverting the limits. So this is num minus e to the power minus lambda t. This is the this is the uh, CDF that I had given you in the transformation of the random variable thing, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So this is just c as t tends to infinity. This will go to zero. And now we find that expected value. Correct. So and now you tell me probability of x greater than t. What will it be? So expectation also you will be able to find. You can use this to find your expectation as well. So I was telling you now, I can use this formula. So tell me, what would be x greater than t? How can I find? So your your half life equation I will derive using memoryless property or your decay decay parameter. So x so not x sorry sorry t greater than t life is greater than t. T years t seconds t units. Tell me how to find. You can write this as one minus p of p less than equal to small. Very good. Yes. So one minus c d f of. Very good. So one minus one minus e to the power minus lambda t, which is equal to e to the power minus. E. Now you see the relationship between the physics and the distribution. So the life, the probability of your life was decaying like this. So surviving would decay as exponential. Right. Now let us do the expected value in one line. Expected value of t. What will be the expected value of t? Integral of one minus e to the power minus lambda t dt. Yes. From zero to infinity, this is nothing but one minus f x dx. 
This is what we are doing. That formula that we found out. So what is this integral? So I will just check this one. So x greater than zero. Let me just check that. Uh, this one. So we had done. What was the formula that we found out? So x greater than zero. This was the formula, right, for the expected value. And x less than zero. It was f of x. So we are right and good to go. Okay. Now, so what will be this integral? One. So I can write your d of as one minus lambda t or not. Do you agree this I can write or not? Although this is not making sense. Wait. Let's just integrate it first. T minus 1 by lambda I think there is a 1 by lambda e to the power minus lambda t. I have a plus here from 0 to infinity. Right? Sir, won't it be like 1 minus uh, the CDF? Like oh, one yeah, yeah. 1 minus the CDF. That's what I'm thinking. Why am I making a mistake? So we have written 1 minus fx, right? Good. So it's one minus f of t. I am writing just one because there is a one minus, so I directly wrote one minus. This is equal to e to the power minus lambda t dt between zero and infinity, which is nothing but equal to one by lambda, right? Agreed. Now you uh, last day we see, saw the memoryless property of a exponent of a geometry. Can you tell me the memoryless property of a? Can you prove that for me for this as well? Can you prove it for me? This what? Yeah. So if you integrate this, what will it be? So d of t I can write as lambda t, 1 by lambda, right? So I'll get 1 by lambda. So, uh, okay, go ahead. Whoever was telling me the uh, answer to this memoryless property, tell me how to do it. So expected value I have shown you, please find the variance. Variance of T. You will be surprised to see what you will get. Anyways, tell me what will, how will I do this? We did it yesterday. Given that T takes a, T is more than S seconds, what is the probability that t will be more than t plus s seconds? Tell me. What will I use? You can, yeah. You can use that uh, the conditional probability. Uh, Base rule. Oh, conditional probability. Okay. T plus s and t greater than s. You are saying this yes, one. Yes. By yes. t greater. Yeah. So you have intersection of these two sets, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So which is the subset? Which is the superset? Uh, the left hand side is the um, left hand side is the superset. So left hand side, you are saying this one. Left hand side is the subset. Left hand side is the subset. Correct. So because why is it a subset? 
because t yeah. greater than s yeah. is all the values from s to infinity and t greater than s plus t is all the values from this so it's clearly t greater than t plus s from this is a subset of yes or no right so x inverse or t inverse always try to write this it will become it will make your conception very clear right yes or no yes okay. yes so what is the numerator be anyone else only one person is understanding others what happened to bromoji this today is not even responding okay what will be the numerator then it will just be the subset right t greater than equal to t plus s right by probability t greater than s so what is this probability we already found what is the probability of the numerator we will already minus lambda times uh, t plus s no t plus t greater than t we have already found right e to the power minus lambda yeah. t that's what i said oh e to the power of t plus s yeah. minus oh exponential of this you said na yes yes yes, yes. okay this is exponential of minus lambda t which is nothing but probability of t greater than t right so if you have waited for s second so this is where you were talking about the poisson process so if you have already waited for s seconds you may have to wait for more t seconds for arrival this is same as the probability that you had started from zero and you are waiting from waiting for t seconds so this is memoryless in that sense right so if you are used to be given a question so a radioactive substance has a half life of 50 years so we in 50 years it did not decay what is the expected time will it decay in? it will be again 50 years right if it is a single element you do not really know when it will decay given that you have waited for 50 years that is in, invalid like uh, knowledge that you have every time you are waiting you are not going to get any extra information that's it now the most important distribution in all of machine learning is the normal distribution so the normal distribution so we'll do this and transformation and then maybe i don't know if there will be time enough so at the end okay the normal distribution says that why is it most important distribution because everything is centered around the mean and this is the distribution that the entire world maps this is the distribution that we see in daily lives that everybody is very close to the mean mean being their mean and their variance being and you get like bad or very good results away from your mean very few times in your life and you on, on average you have a fixed characteristic for example if you see the height of a class you may see that 170 cm there are 100 people but 200 cm there can be only one similarly 120 cm only one can be there so this is a very very standard distribution to see in everyday life right so your class marks for example your class marks and your grades are modeled using using the stand normal distribution why because the class average say is 70 and the standard deviation is 15 so you will see that most of the people are getting around 70 one or two got 95 one people one person got 95 and one person failed maybe 
but rest everybody will be near the mean is the intuition clear if you draw you draw a histogram you will see something like this so this is where you see in every everywhere you will do you if you are you will be in fourth year you'll be seeing image processing and so on you'll be using normals everywhere and also like without normal you can't do anything in life the normal distribution is the most important distribution ever so also known as the bell curve which is equal to e to the power minus z square by 2 so do you agree that e to the power minus z square by 2 will look something like this e to the power minus z looks like this right the exponential and so if you have a square it will, it will give you both sides of the zero and the concavity will change a bit that you can see using calculus by taking derivatives and all so it will be something like this do you agree the curve yes. the f of f of z curve or the density curve now you tell me how do i find the normalizing factor of this curve what is the density how do i find c to the power minus z square by 2 minus infinity to infinity equal to 1 how do i find c can you tell me let's write it is equal to i equal to 1 any idea here remember this is the mean and this is the standard deviation square or the variance we'll see more in details of this in in some time have you ever solved this integral in your life this type of an integral e to the power minus z square by 2 it's a non integrable form but if it is a definite integral you can do it do you know how to do it see this is not trivial so uh, there is a story that when this integral came about the mathematician was doing this integral was so frustrated that he couldn't do it he wrote the integral twice this is a folklore let's write it in terms of x just changing the variables for our sake only he wrote the integral twice like this right and converted a single integral to a double integral and there he was he had completed the integral do you understand how we did complete the integral by writing it twice no. so if this is x and this is y they are independent i can make them a double integral now like this c square e to the power minus x square plus y square by 2 dx dy this is okay yes now we can convert to polar coordinates and polar very good so you can see this is the this is nothing but a polar coordinate system right we used to do this in finding centrifugal cent centripetal force centripets the moment of inertia center of mass and all so your if you want to find an area dx dy do you remember how you did it using polar coordinates you can also find if you want to find an area of the disk you can do integral dx dy also or you can do something like this as well right this is r and this is d theta so your what will be this area and this is dr so do you agree that this area will be the length of this rectangle will be r d theta and this will be dr that's how you define angles right so d area will be which is also equal to dx dy proportion equivalent to is proper equivalent to d r d theta dr do you agree or not so do you know what is the definition of an of an angle angle is defined by the circumference by radius right yes or no angle in radians is nothing but circumference by radius for example you say a total angle of a circle is 2 pi right this is because circumference is 2 pi r and you divide by r right so 
तो आर्क लेंथ तो थीटा इज डिफाइंड एज आर्क लेंथ बाई रेडियस ये सर नो ओके इफ इट इज डिफाइंड दिस वे सो वॉट इज योर दिस आर्क लेंथ आर्क लेंथ इज योर रेडियस इन टू द एंगल ये सर नो रेडियस इन टू एंगल right so that's what i've written so radius into angle and if it is if the angle is very small it will not be curved it will be straight that's the idea so what will be the area of this rectangle r d theta dr or not yes yes so dx dy can i replace by r d theta dr and what is x square plus y square Equal to r square. So this is your x y. Yes or no? Simple. The radius of the radius of the radius of the tangent. Would, what am I saying? The radius will be equal to the square square of the uh, Cartesian coordinates, right? The length of the vector. So this will be r e to the power minus r square by two. dr d theta what will be the range of r and theta to get the entire disk what will be the area of the r and theta to get the entire cartesian from 0 to root of r of x square plus y square r is from 0 to infinity because your x is from 0 to infinity y is from 0 to infinity if you want to get everything here r will be from r will be greater than 0 And theta will be between zero and two pi, right? For a particular r, you will be doing that. So, what is the integral of this? Now you can do the integral or not. So, mm -hmm. theta you can separate this c square integral of d theta zero to two pi integral of zero to uh, zero to infinity e to the power minus r square by two d of r square by two. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. R r dr can be written as d of r square by 2 or not yes. differentiate yes so now this is equal to e to the power of minus r square by 2 from 0 to infinity right i am because there is a negative i am changing the limit into 2 pi and that is equal to i square so i square is equal to c square 2 pi this is you agree it is 1 This is equal to one. So C is equal to one by root two pi. So your CDF would be your density function is one by root two pi e to the power minus z square by two. Okay. Happy. So now you can calculate the mean. Mean is of course zero because this is an even function. So increase integral of f of z, z dz is zero. Agreed. Yeah. Minus infinity to infinity. Z into f of z. It's a f f z is an even function. Z is an odd function. So what is the what is the product of an even function and an odd function? It's an okay. odd function. Yes. So in the what is the integral of an odd function from minus? Yeah. Zero. Similarly, you can do for homework integral of minus infinity to infinity z square f of z dz. So how can for a distribution and u value be zero? Why can't it be zero? For a distribution, you sometimes this is centered around zero, right? So this is minus infinity. This is oh, infinity. Oh yes, yes, yes. Then 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 then. So okay, okay, yes. Now I will tell you why can it be zero. Say your class height is one seventy centimeter is the average height, right? Mm -hmm. So say your x is distributed as normal one seventy, and say the standard deviation is fifteen, right? Mm -hmm. So now if I write x equal to x minus one seventy, some y, right? So now what is the mean mean of y? Is x mean expected value of y is equal to expected value of x minus one seventy? So this is called recentering, recentering. So 
you will for some values you will get negative x for some value you will get positive x some event that's it so to do this you will get one the variance of the normal distribution finally there is this called the this density the distribution of the random distribution known as the phi of z so what is phi of z it is the integral of tell me what will it be this is the probability that z is less than small z right yes or no so i am defining phi of z as probability of z less than small z right is this okay the cdf i mean instead of writing f of z i mean this is what is done in so books and all so i am writing phi of z is it okay or not okay so this what will it be minus infinity to z 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 yes or no yes yeah. agree okay so but the sad thing is you cannot integrate this you need a computer and you need a i told you this is a non integrable form you can only integrate it for minus infinity to infinity not for any z because that trick will not hold that we did just now if it is not the entire cartesian space right so for this you need a numerical method like trapezoidal rule and all which you have done i hope in your courses but uh, you will use trapezoidal rule and find the area for the integral right that you can do but i am saying forget about that so what values does phi take phi of z what does phi of z look like let us draw two things let us draw the pdf f of z and then let us draw the cdf which is in the black color so what is the maximum value that are of the pdf at 0 it is 1 by root 2 pi right at z equal to 0 the height is 1 by root 2 pi right for f of z equal to 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 at z equal to 0 f of z of 0 is equal to 1 by root 2 pi right now i want to say what will be the cdf can you tell me we have already discussed the general property of cdfs already in today's class it will be in non decreasing function right? correct between 0 and 1 right yes yes so at point at 0 what will be the probability the probability of z x can you tell me z of 0 or phi of 0 what will it be you should be able to tell me this just by seeing this if you can tell me i will be happy it will be 0.5 because of the symmetry of the very good so this is a even function right so minus infinity to my infinity 1 by 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 dz is nothing but 2 into integral of 0 to infinity 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 even function yes or no correct which is equal to 1 by the definition of probability total probability so phi of 0 this is this is phi of 0 right you agree is nothing but half right yes or no so you will have a uniform increase on both sides this is your cdf understood 
good now we will as monostrija pointed out someone else tell me using the symmetry she told me about symmetry how can i prove this term that f of 1 minus z is equal to minus of fz phi of z how can i prove this using the symmetry i use symmetry to prove this how how do i do this see what is phi of z let us draw the diagram then we will do it mathematically let's draw it do it intuitively so let's they say this is z right right so your 1 minus z will be don't write z here this is phi inverse right so phi of remember phi of z is defined as integral of minus infinity to z f of 1 by 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 dz right this is our definition so what would f inverse of z give me what will it give me p inverse of z let's not write z over here let's write x what will give what will p inverse of a particular number give me say let's say this is z p inverse will give me the value of x for which this is how you define it for which the probability is z right right so if you have a probability of 0.5 so what will be phi so you do you know do you see phi of 0 is equal to 0.5 yes or no yes so what will be phi inverse of 0.5 zero 0, 0. so for this integral it will give me the top limit right phi yeah. inverse of z okay now tell me this is 1 This point five, right? Now, I'm drawing this for a reason. So, say your z value, which is between zero and one, right? Z is between zero and one. Agreed? And you want to do a p inverse, yes or no? Yes. So let's say z is equal to somewhere here. So one minus z you will definitely be somewhere here, yes or no? At equal distance from point five or not? See z plus one minus z by two will be equal to point five, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So you see, you take the inverse. Say this is your inverse, right? So this is your phi inverse of z, yes or no? This point on the x-axis, right? What is the inverse? You take the you you drop the perpendicular from the point that z touches the curve, right or no? Yes or no? tell me what is the problem bit of getting these two points on x x x1 and x2 can you tell me what is the problem like if i do a f inverse for this x1 i will get 1 minus z yes or no yes bro mujhe tell me for x1 P of x one is one minus z. Yes. yes. So x one is f phi inverse. Sorry, that's what you are confused about. 
3 inverse of 1 minus z x1 is similarly z is equal to 3 of x2 is equal to z so 3 inverse of z will be x x2 yes or no yes now see if they are at equal distance on the cdf as well i may have drawn it a bit incorrectly but still bear it with me so since they are at equal distance they will be something like this symmetric distance d this side will be distance d on this side yes or no yes so your if your distances are the same this side so you'll say x1 is equal to x1 minus 0 mod is equal to x2 minus 0 yes or no the distance on both sides because 0 is the center from this figure right x2 and x1 on a, since this is at equal distance these two will also be at equal distance right on this curve mm -hmm. so yes, the the, so the negative or the amount of negative distance and the positive distance are the same do you agree or not mm -hmm. so x1 x1 is less than 0 so it will be 0 minus x1 equal to x2 which is x2 is greater than 0 so x1 what is it phi of 1 minus z is equal to phi of z you can also do this algebraically algebraically will be your homework because uh, now your brain may not be working to do it immediately but algebraically also you can do by just trying to write this definition and then writing out the integrals i will maybe i will post it i have it solved i, I just want to do do it two ways there is no much time left that's why do you understand so phi of yeah. z and 1 minus z are symmetric about 0.5 and which is zero so due to the even function characteristics the distance from zero on both sides will be the same right so the distance from zero if they are same so mod of x1 will be equal to mod of x2. So x1 is negative, right? According to the picture, x1 is negative or not? So if it is negative, so mod of x1 will be minus x1, yes or no? Yes. So that's what I've written. Minus x1 is nothing but minus of phi inverse of 1 minus z. So that's just from the picture you can get it and algebraically using integration you can show it as well but you will essentially do the same picture that's not a issue so in the last five or ten minutes what we'll do is we'll do all this next day central limit theorem and all we'll introduce in the last part of it what is transformation of random variables that's what it will be the last topic for today and we'll do one question and then call it a day why do we need transformation of random variables we have been discussed we have done this using say y is a random variable or say x is a random variable right okay so we have yesterday we have seen if f is a function. So y is another random variable which maps from right. So y is defined as f of x of omega. Yes or no? Remember? This is a number. So f maps from the range of x to range of y right so 
so a random variable for example a head yesterday we had shown head comma tail was being mapped to 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 using a random variable x and we said x plus 1 so it became 2 and 1 so what is f of x of head which is equal to y What is the value of f of x of head? Two. Correct. Please, please interact. I'll be easy for me. And similarly, f of x of tail will be one. So why did i tell this so you agree that y equal to y defined as f of x is a random variable or not do you agree Irfan? yes it's a random variable so can we use it can we find so say we know so we'll do this next say x is distributed as some f what what x uh, what how the, exactly so f is distributed as some fx right and capital fx so what would be y distributed as can we find this so we have we know y is equal to let's not write say let's say it's some function g for the time being because f we are writing anyways it will be easy for two of us to understand. Okay. Huh. Sir, we I can't hear you. Sir, we have the engagement for 11.30. You have to? I have the engagement from 11.30. So no, no, no I, will, I will stop. You can leave, yeah. I will stop in five or ten minutes. You can see the uh, yeah. last, yeah. Then last 10 minutes you can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So so what will y be? Y will be how do you find the distribution of y? So I showed you how to do it for the uniform f of x case so uh, how will i do it let's guy someone guide me to step by step through it so first step would be i would write for the cdf right so y is less than y so what will it be y less than y Romujit. minus infinite to y g x so why uh, uh, you remember Munushrija that we had uh, we did this question with y equal to f of x or Brahmuji do you remember will, will this be minus infinity to plus y gx so you are saying minus infinity to plus y gx like this so what what is this? This is does not making a does not make any sense, right? Gx is not a distribution. Uh, can we write the, the that as p of um, capital Y less than g g of x? Y is the random variable, right? Oh. Y is not y is a number fixed number. Oh, sorry, cap, cap, capital uh, capital Y is equal to g of capital X, right? So yeah, so capital Y can be written as g of capital X less than uh, so this is the general way of doing the sum. If you are told to do a general sum, you can do this this way. But if G is a monotonically increasing function, then you can use one property. If and only if monotonically increasing G, then only you can use it. Otherwise, we will see how to do this for this uh, 
for this case in the next two minutes. But if it is monotonically increasing, what can we write? So what is f of y? Do you know? Do you understand this is f of y? This definition. This is a CDF, right? I'm trying to relate f of y and f of x, right? So if it is a monotonically increasing function, what will I do? Can I take inverse? It does inverse exist? Y1 and Y2. If your inverse exists, what can I do? I can write X as. So we have seen this before, right? So X was Fy. X2 was. So f of y1 is great is less than f of y2 means meant that x2 is greater than x1. So I can uh, easily take the inverse because it's a one one function right on both sides and the inequality will not flip. Yes or no? So. Uh, I'm saying if you're if you have an inverse here, if you take the inverse of these two. So your inequality will your inequality flip or not? Will it flip? If it is decreasing, then it will flip, right? So I will give you a homework, then you will understand. Let G be monotonically decreasing. Then you find the same relation. How will you do it? That relation I will find just now. Decreasing, then find, then relate fx and fy. This is your homework. OK, so I can take this inverse. So what does it mean? F of x of g inverse of y, yes or no? Now x is the random variable which I know already, yes or no? So if I differentiate both sides with dx. Let's write it down. Minus infinity to y f of y dy is equal to minus infinity to g inverse of y f of x dx. Is this equal? Yes or no? Do you agree with it? Yes. So what what can I do? How what can I differentiate on both sides with? So I know y is equal to f of x. Do I know that? Or g of x here, right? Y is equal to g of x. Correct. So your dy dx will be g dash x. This term you can keep for the time being. So if I differentiate both sides with d dx, so what will I get? If I differentiate both sides with d dx, what will I get? Tell me, use the neutral Leibniz formula and tell me. Uh, LHS will be uh, G dash X into F Y. And F X, you will put this inside, right? So the numerator will be. Right. Yes or no? And this is the constant yes. with respect to X. And on the left hand side, what will you have? F y of y dy dx. Yes or no? Right? What is g inverse of y? That is x, right? Do you agree? From this yes. definition, x is equal to g inverse of y. So d dx is equal to 1. This is why it's 1. So you can write f y of y is equal to this. 
this equation is very handy. Let's do it for a normal. This distribution and then we'll stop. So if X is equal to mu plus sigma Z, where Z is distributed as normal zero one, what would be? F of Y. F of X DX. This is also known as X is distributed as normal mu sigma. Squared. Tell me. How will I do it? What is the first step I will follow? What is the equation that we found? DX DZ will be equal to DZ. For a it is one to one or not? One one and increasing for sigma greater than zero. Which is standard deviation is always greater than zero. It's one one increasing function. So we can use the above. Rules. What is DX DZ? What is the derivative sigma. of it? sigma? So what is what is Z now? So what is my desire? I want to find X, right? Yes or no? So what is F of Z? 1 by 2 pi e to the power minus Z square by 2 or not? And DX DZ is sigma. Okay. Yes or no? Yes, yes. So then uh, I'm asking, how can you replace? Now, what is the idea? Say so x is equal to mu plus sigma z. So I need to replace z with x in some way. Yes or no? To get a function of x, how can I do that? What will be z? What will be z as a function of x? Z equals x minus mu by sigma. So what will be your fx of x, which you see in your books all the time? 1 by sigma 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu square by 2 sigma square, right? Yes or no? Isn't it simple to use transformation and do this? So always remember your random variable x, which when is sampled from mu sigma is sampled actually from normal 0 1 only. But you scale and shift it by mean and standard deviation. Okay. So finish this off. Last question. And then we'll be going away. But I'll ask you one thing. So uh, for this question, can I use this function? This is a very important this is a question that may be asked in your interviews and all. Can I use fx equal to fy dy dx? Can I use it here? Y is equal to u square. U is uniform 0, 1. Can I use? Can I use this derivative function to find the PDF directly? And if no, I don't I don't think so because what? in the in the proof we have used the concept of inverse, right? And yes. We have assumed that the monotonically senior, increasing function. Yes, yes, yes. Monotonically increasing. So this has a minima, right? It's not monotonically increasing. Yes. And also it so is it, not invertible in that sense. Yes. So if it is not monotonically increasing, it it cannot be invertible. Because if of course, if it is decreasing and increasing in some interval, it will always have a inverse. It will not have an inverse. That's what I'm saying. I hope you understand. So, so you can you guide me to how to do this sum? So you can you have to follow the first principle. You have to follow the first principle to do it. 
what is the first step i will do so uniform minus 1 and 1 if it was between uniform 0 1 there was no problem right so you are distributing minus 1 and 1 between minus 1 and 1 and 1 so minus 0 0.5 square is equal to 0 0.5 square that is the problem but if it was between 0 and 1 you could have done directly so yeah, your homework will be do for y equal to u square u is uniform 0 1 and then you can use both the first principle and the formula you will get the same answer tell me what will be the first principle i will be using to find the pdf of y so cdf you cannot find when you are you cannot use the principle the derivative rule so you have to then find the first principle and use the cdf so what will i do tell me y less than y first step Yes or no? Why less than why? I think there's a network issue. You're not seeing the screen. Okay, I think now you'll be able to see. Okay. So y less than y, what will it be? Y is equal to u square. What will I do? I can. What is the first step that I was following? I was replacing y with the random variable in the original form, right? Once I do that, I will because because I already know the random variable in the original form, so I can write u less than equal to y. Yes or no? U squared less than equal to y. Agreed? Yes. If I write u square less than or equal to y for what values of u will I get u square less than or equal to y? Say your y. So your y is mapping from minus 1 and 1 to what is it mapping between? 0 and 1? Yes or no? It is squared function. So your uniform was like this. This is was your u minus 1 to 1. And your u square is this. Your u square will only be this. So rather you can just see this is this will be your u square. So this is just the the PDF. If you see, you will be able to understand. We'll see. So minus one and one. If you see something like this, this was this will be your u square, right? So between negative one and one. So what is if, if u square is less than y, I'm asking what is the value of u can take or what values of u is u square less than y? Can you tell me? U square is less than y between. So if I bring this this side, u square minus y less than zero. So I can write u minus root y and u plus root y less than zero. Agreed? Right? Yes, that means u has to be between minus, uh, minus root y and plus root y. To make it zero, less than zero, right? So this is equivalent to saying u has to be between. So this is the problem you will face when the domain and the range set are not one one. Then you will have to do it manually. So what is this now? What is this probability? Now you can answer, right? Now it is distributed as u u between minus u and u minus root y to y root y what is it what is this area so integral of minus y 
रूट वाई टू रूट वाई हाफ डी यू दिस इज इक्वल टू नथिंग बट रूट वाई बाई टू ये सर नो सो योर प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एफ वाई इज रूट वाई वाई डिड आई पुट हाफ कैन यू टेल मी देन आई विल स्टॉप It's one by one minus of minus one. So Correct. One. So the f of u is u is equal to half between minus one and one zero otherwise. Understood, right? How to do this? So what will be the CDF f of f y of y? Now you can find this. What will I do to find the CDF PDF? We so have to if, differentiate with respect to y. Correct. So one by two root y, right? This will be your PDF. So your CDF will be like this, right? This is your CDF function. If y of y zero is zero, one it is one. It will be a parabola. So x is equal to root y. If I say y is equal to root x so y square equal to x so it's like this it will be like your function will be like this although this is your u square function although your u function was something like this do you agree this was half minus 1 and 1 this was for u and this is for u square right u was a linear function so if you integrated between minus 1 and x you would get nothing but half into x minus x plus 1 is it right correct this is for u cdf of u check this at home and try to solve this question again you have the non annotated notes as well try to solve it you will understand and once you have solved it try to give solve this homework as well if u is between 0 and 1 try to solve this one and the homework i gave you gave you for the other question as well for a non monotonically decreasing function try to find this monotonically decreasing function also try to find this and we'll see you maybe on or uh, maybe at the at night around 9 on wednesday or thursday i'll tell you try to solve this question and keep post it until you post it i will not solve put the solutions to the questions okay if you have any doubt you ask me now or we'll stop let me if you have a doubt please ask me now or we'll stop the any doubts please go, go over the thing go over the material we have some time now and we'll try to complete as much as probability next week and go to and to linear algebra before please try to solve and and any doubts so if you don't have a doubt you tell me no else we are going we went very slow today i had planned a lot more but anyways it's good that we went slow that you if you have understood it is good You understood, right? Or if you don't, please discuss. Put it in the channel, in the team, in the team's channel. We will, and I, we will discuss. I will send the solution.